My name is Edison Folks. I grew up in Terrell, Texas. And I worked at Hampton University in Hampton, Virginia. I'm Todd Ekdahl. I grew up in Elk River, Minnesota, and I work at Missouri Western State University in St. Joseph, Missouri. Hello, my name is Consuelo Alvarez. I work at Longwood University, a small school in Farmville, Virginia. I was born in Quito, Ecuador, and since my original language is Spanish, I, will I would like to tell you my story in Spanish. I first realized that I had a passion for science when I was a little boy around three years old. I was really impressed the way plants seemingly move toward the light, and I wanted to find out why. So I designed various experiments to find the answers. Also, I never found the answer, but I had a lot of fun in the process of trying to find the answer, and I uh, became addicted to to plant, to research. It was an addiction that I could not knock. And the only way out was to go to college to learn more about plants. So I think one of the things that comes to mind is a science fair project that I did in the fifth grade. And it was called, What's Your BIQ? It was about honeybees. The title's pretty clever, which I need to credit to my grandfather, who also taught me a lot about bees and beekeeping. Uh, he was a honey salesman, and he set me and my brother Troy up with hives, and we learned all about bees. And so I conceived of this science fair project, which was really a science demonstration to explain to people you know, what those little furry creatures were in the backyard that would sting your little sister all the time. Mi interés por las ciencias es muy natural. Eh, nació y tiene sus raíces en Ecuador. Ecuador es un país rico en, de, en diversidad. Y estuve siempre alrededor de la naturaleza. Le pedí a mis papás que me lleven al valle. Uh, para buscar y encontrar organismos y mirar cómo crecen, se mantienen. Mi curiosidad siempre fue al nivel de, la, de las moléculas. I hung around with a group of boys that, uh, you know, were very curious about the world, and I felt like, you know, we were trying to be little scientists, you know, and uh, so I really didn't feel atypical in terms of my interest for science. Uh, not all of those boys went into science, uh, but they all had that same kind of curiosity about the world. And so I just feel lucky that I have a job where I can explore that. Not very many of the kids that I grew up with ended up going to college. Uh, I grew up in a small town in Elk River, Minnesota. And, uh, you know, a lot of those kids stayed in Elk River, Minnesota. And uh, they ended up getting a job. You know, maybe they, you know, started a family and had responsibilities to support their family. Uh, so, you know, going to college wasn't the, the norm, uh, and even once you did get to college, uh, getting a college degree and then working was more what you did. You know, the idea of going on to graduate school was not very common. So, you know, it turns out that I'm the first person in my family to get a college degree. Uh, so, you know, hopefully things are changing where the next generation sees that that's possible. There were very few children who were niños y estudiantes que estaban interesados en ciencias, que deseaban obtener su carrera y tener un trabajo. Yo siempre quería seguir más y más y más. Tanto así que mi papá me preguntó, ¿cuándo vas a terminar de estudiar? Llevas 18 años estudiando. Y le dije, papi, una vez que encuentra usted el gusto de estudio, nunca parará hasta que muera. Siempre a lo largo de mi carrera, no importa a qué nivel, a nivel de colegio o de universidad, o, de, o, de o como estudiante graduado, encontré personas que siempre me apoyaban, y no solamente emocionalmente, en, en forma emocional, pero también a través de una beca para lograr mis estudios. Las personas no eran necesariamente relacionadas a ciencias, eran personas que, eh, profesores que eran de educación lógica inglés. Uh, pero siempre hubo la persona de química que me ayudó y de física, un PhD de Estados Unidos que me ayudó a encontrar una beca y lograr obtener un PhD como lo hice yo. I went to two different graduate schools, first at Michigan State, where I received a master's degree, and uh, I had an opportunity to work with uh, Fred Elliott, a uh, noted cytogeneticist, and uh, I realized then that the impact of research, uh, that research could have a great impact on the world. He was developing new crops for agriculture and for the world. So I wanted to be a part of it. And so I decided that 
I wanted to continue to do research in molecular biology and also to take my training from Michigan State, that is the knowledge that I had learned and experiences from Michigan State and develop an undergraduate molecular biology program at a HBCU. So I went to Bishop College in Dallas, Texas, where we put in place the first undergraduate molecular biology program at any black college in America with funding in the amount of over $2 million. So uh, that gave students a chance to enter the field of molecular biology. And at that time, we created uh, uh, a summer program where we brought in high school kids and turned them on to molecular biology. So probably I first realized that I wanted a career in science during college. Uh, I went to college thinking that I would be a pre-med and that I would go to medical school. And uh, it turns out I hadn't really thought very deeply about that. Uh, and I had a class in genetics in the summer of my junior year with Professor Steve Hedman. And uh, that really turned me on. I thought that was really cool. And he modeled for me what it would be like to be a scientist and to be a professor. And he explained to me that, you know, if you want to do that, you could do that. Because I didn't really feel the passion to be a, a medical doctor. Uh, but I started to get the idea that being a scientist might be a lot of fun and might be a really rewarding path for me instead. Cuando consideré otras carreras que no sean educación, siempre estaban orientadas a ayudar a las personas, pero encontré en educación que es la semilla que crece y se queda con la persona y de ahí ellos pueden hacer lo que mejor puedan. Pensé en medicina, um, en medicina deportiva, pero solamente un, si le podemos decir, una recuperación temporal. Uh, me gusta más algo que, que esté de por vida por, con ellos, con las personas que se ayuda y educación es, es donde encontré el lugar. I love my job because I have an opportunity to be creative, to invent new ways of doing things. In fact, uh, at Hampton University, we've had a chance to bring the disciplines together as uh, was started back in the early 70s at, at Bishop College. We essentially are trying, we have a program this summer that, that is supported by the Howard Hughes Medical Institute, where we have brought in 20 young people from the various disciplines, from chemistry, from mathematics, from engineering, from computer science, and biology. And they're going to essentially focus on DNA from the standpoint of these various perspectives. And they're really turning on to us, uh, to it. And so we want them to understand that in the future, a there will be a team approach. There are going to be a team working, trying to solve the cancer problem. An engineer is needed, a mathematician is needed, a computer scientist is needed, a biologist is needed, a chemist is needed, all working as a team. The best part about my job uh, is getting to interact with young people and new young people every year diverse kinds of young people, each of which have their own ideas about what they'd like to do, and just to try and you know, model a behavior that says to them, you can do whatever you want to do. If it's right for you to become a teacher, then you can do that. If you think that you want to go into medicine, then you can do that. If you want to be a professor at a research university or a professor at an undergraduate university, uh, that's something that you can do. And so I just really get a thrill out of being able to interact with young people, and it's just invigorating. You know, every year that I get to work at my university, I think, is a blessing. Me gusta mucho la interacción que tengo con los estudiantes. Desde muy pequeña siempre estuve en contacto con estudiantes ayudándoles eh, y en, especialmente en el área de química. Y fue natural para mí encontrar un puesto en el que pueda no solamente hacer investigación, pero también dictar clases. Eh, hay muchos instantes y sin decir nombres de estudiantes que luego de su carrera en la universidad han logrado um, obtener su doctorado en medicina o, o ser un dentista, le llaman y le dicen quiero que venga a mi grado o quiero que venga y sea parte de mi, de mi evento matrimonial, es, le da, le da a uno lágrimas, le pone, le pone a uno muy emocionado saber que 
a pesar que nosotros enseñamos a un gran número de estudiantes, hay algunos que regresan y le dicen gracias en ciertas formas, no necesariamente con una carta o con palabras gracias, pero, ven, uh, para, pero ser parte de la vida de ellos en la graduación o en un evento matrimonial. Oh, yes. Back in the late 60s, around 69, I guess, uh, Professor Heinz Frickel Conrad uh, brought uh, Professor Fred Sanger to my lab bench and introduced me and asked him to, me to share with him the polynucleotide phosphokinase that I had teased out of E. coli after this enzyme had been induced by the T4 phage. So I wrapped up the entire uh, system and gave it to him to take back to England. But he said at that time that he was interested in DNA sequencing. And of course, about seven or eight years later, he published the now famous uh, Sanger technology for sequencing DNA, and the rest is history. <laughs> yeah, so I had a class this year in genetics. And uh, during that class, we had a particular lab uh, where students were doing experiments and collecting their own data on a particular kind of a genetic cross. And the students came across something unexpected. And the students were responsible for giving presentations to the class. And uh, I remember this particular group uh, that was so excited to be able to present what they had found to the class. And uh, they almost act acted sheepish about this because they were like, oh, wow, should we be saying this? You know, this isn't what it's supposed to be, is it? You know, and I thought that was really great that they were able to stand up in front of their colleagues and say, this is what we found. We're not sure if this is right, but it's new. And they were really enthused by that. And afterwards, I took them aside and I said, that was awesome because that's what science is about, trying to find out something that other people don't know and then have the courage to tell people about it. And that was really invigorating for me and for them. I can tell them that they can do what I do. Uh, they should first go to school, they should study and do well in mathematics in the STEM areas. And they too can become a scientist, they too can become a professor. And this is a rewarding position. You have a chance to really impact the lives of young people. You have a chance to really, really keep this country great. Oh, I would absolutely encourage them and I have encouraged students uh, to have a job like mine. Uh, you know, it turns out that one of the things that I learned is, you know, when I was in college, you know, I really idolized my professors. And I thought, oh, he or she is so smart, you know, how do you get to be that way? And one of the things I've learned is that they're just people, and yes, they're smart people, uh, but they're doing a job that I could do. And so I pass that on to my students, you know, because sometimes they'll, they'll make comments like, you know, wow, I could never do what you do. And I tell them, no, that's wrong. You could do what I can do, and you could do it better, and you could do it in your own way. And so when students have an interest in teaching, whether it's on the high school level or the college level or at a research university, I always try and encourage them and say, you know, you have something that you could contribute to this. And I know that you could do a good job, probably a better job than I can do. Uh, encontrar la pasión en uno mismo. A veces, cuando estamos creciendo, queremos satisfacer a nuestros papás, a nuestros amigos, y la verdad es que uno tiene que encontrar la pasión. Y si esa pasión es educar, tienes que buscar la forma de cómo hacerlo. Porque una vez que eso sucede, te sientes bien y con plenitud. So, I think the advice that I would give the little Todd is, uh, you know, live for today. Enjoy what it is that you have right in front of you. Live for the moment. Don't worry too much about the future. Don't worry about planning things out exactly right. Take things as they come. And uh, then if you do what you're supposed to be doing, if you work hard, then someday you can end up having a job that you love. And then people will actually pay you for it. I would uh, tell myself to essentially be the same way I was uh, Many, many years ago, growing up in Terrell, Texas, essentially follow my own dream. And uh, to remember uh, the lines from Invictus, uh, it matters not how straight the gates, how, how charged with punishment destroyed. I am the master of my fate and I'm the captain of my soul. 